Welcome back to the Sunday footy show and what a win it was for Ricky's Raiders. They're flying high, securing their fifth straight victory with a 26 to 18 win over the Parramatta Eels. Bill, how highly did you rate this Raider performance last can, night? Can you believe five straight now? They started the season one from five games. Um, and then the situation with Jack Whiten, they have just galvanised as a group. I, I see them as a, a real old school footy team and, and Ricky Stewart's a bit of an old school coach as well. Um, I, I think they just compete. Um, they're a team that can beat anyone. I don't even know if they'll play finals, but I tell you what, they can beat any team in the competition because of guys like Hudson Young. They've got big forwards in, in Papali'i and Tarpane. Um, Horsburgh's playing the house down and, and all these young, exciting players are just jumping off the back of it with a lot of confidence. So uh, they're, they're a team, Canberra. Do you read much into the, the five straight, what went on just before that? So they had that big loss to the Penrith Panthers yeah. and then the next game that they won was over the Brisbane Broncos, who at the time were top of the table. Well, you know, they've obviously had a good hard look at themselves after a, a pretty disappointing loss and they've changed a few efforts in their game. Uh, that's, they're just accountable. Um, and you saw there, you know, big Corey Horsburgh running back on a, on a break. All those little things are, are important. And those little things is what will be shown in reviews and making sure that they're celebrated internally. So um, they've just got a quality football team across the park. Canberra people are a good judge of their footy team. And when Canberra Stadium is full, you know they're having a go. Mm. And they do, they just have a go, like Bill said. They compete. Uh, they've got enough class there now. I think the halfback's doing a really good job. He's got a good kicking game and keeps him in the game. Dummy half's going well as Dummy well. Dummy half, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, strong. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think their their crowd are always a good judge of mm. their team, and their ground was full. Mm. Looked awesome. Do you agree with that, Gus? <clears throat> so, I wasn't listening. <laughs> Uh, Gus Hudson. Mate, it's Sunday the too. Raiders. Yeah, it's Sunday, all right? Yeah. We need to no, just calm everything not down. Monday night. Football. <laughs> Gal's not here, all right? <laughs> um, Hudson Young, what have you made of uh, his performances of late? He's just a worker. He's a, he's a really hard... He, a lot of team-based stuff. He does a lot of things for the team. He does a lot of effort on efforts. He lo does a lot of things that people probably don't see. He's competitive. He's in your face the whole time. Yeah. He's just the sort of player I guess you'd want to play with and that, that transcends through to the top level as well. You know, when you get into those representatives arenas, that's what it's all about. People who are like this, who back themselves and, uh, and want to be a part of the action all the time, keep putting themselves in the game. He does that regularly. Is he on your, um, your origin radar? He's, he's a good player. And uh, like Gus said, I think the one thing I did, I was talking to a Canberra player and just talking about their team and it came up and he said, I like playing with Hudson Young. That was his comment, and straight away you know that he's going to be a good player if the teammates like him. So that's your best indication ever that, um, you know, you've got a good bloke who puts the team first. What about for the Parramatta Eels? Is this loss, also considering, Bill, they did have, not have Mitchell Moses yeah. in their side at all, is this a concerning result for them? Yeah, no, Regan Campbell-Gillard also. Um, so they're down on troops, and, and Gus spoke earlier, when you have... You know, key position players out of your team, it, it makes it really difficult. And they, they came up against a really good side um, down in Canberra, um, gave away a whole heap of penalties, which Brad Arthur wasn't overly happy about in the post-match press conference. So, um, you know, whether they need to look at some of the, their discipline in their game or a few other things, but they're, they're, not, they're not far off. Mitchell Moses was a big loss. They were way down on their kicking last mm. night, way down on their longer kicking, metres made from kicking. Mm. It, it really hurt them last night over the course of the 80 minutes. So he's a massive loss for he them. He hasn't missed many games. No. Like over the last couple of years, he hasn't missed many games. And that's just their style. Even if they don't get out of trouble, he's got such a long, consistent high kick where his team gets down... And, you know, that really helps him out. Well, it gives them the rhythm. You know, it's five up and he kicks it down the right, five up and he kicks it down the right. And they just get into the rhythm with their attack and their defence, controlling the opposition. They didn't have much control last night. The Raiders were able to do as they liked. Well, they've got South next week too, so they'll come under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Well, considering where they are as well, they're sitting in 15th on the ladder. Is it trouble times? Do you, do you worry about whether they'll be able to make finals footy? I'm sure they're worried. Mm. I'm sure they're worried. We've written them off before and they've come good. Oh, look, look at the Raiders. Raiders got belted by Param uh, Penrith a few weeks ago and they've won five since. If you win four or five in a row in this comp, you will leapfrog a lot of teams because <laughs> no one's doing that. You know, the teams at the top, South and Broncos, are doing it and then here's the Raiders out of nowhere win five in a row and suddenly you go, well, gee, they're not far away. 
Now, you win four or five in a row in this comp, you can really turn your, your season around. Yeah, big, um, big tough week ahead for the Paramount Eels, but good news that they will get Mitchell Moses yeah. back, which is certainly... When's Regan back, do we know? How far is he off? Um, uh, we'll have to double-check that. We'll have a look at the ad break. Yeah, it's something with his hip. Mm. All right, well, we it's are... Damage, um, we... Yeah, groin. It was the groin in Darwin, yeah. Uh, all right, we are off to a quick ba break, but on the other side of it, we'll be having a look at the Dragons and the Cowboys up in North Queensland. This so well, this cool. week's Man Shake Gutsiest Player of the Week award goes to little Tommy Dearden. He may be small in stature, but week in, week out, he goes above and beyond for the Cowboys. And last night's his efforts earned him a classy double in their win over the Dragons. Bill, is he a chance of Queensland origin selection well, it's again fitting, this isn't it? year? Very fitting. Gutsiest player of the week. He is, he is all guts and go, Tommy Dearden. Um, he did a great job last year in Game 3. And uh, the last couple of weeks, he's really come to life at the Cowboys as well. Been a lot more energy about the Cowboys' performance. And uh, it just feels like the Cowboys of old. They've still got a little bit to go. Um, still got some players to come back into their team as well. But they're on the right track. He's also had a ruptured testicle. Mm. <laughs> Do you recommend that as some sort of... <laughs> is, that, is that a good luck charm? Oh, well, he's gutsy. He's gutsy. Played a week later, had a, had a little box on and away he went. I, do, I don't know where to go from here. Just go into where, the where, game. Where do, Just where, go to the game. Where do you see the Cowboys, Freddie? Are they, are they back or...? Yeah. They've uh, just had a couple of good weeks. I think they're back to a degree. I think they played the Roosters last week. It was showing that they're not back and the Dragons are in awful form. So I don't think they've been pressured. As yet, I think Helam Luki wasn't he good? Incredible, fantastic. Um, but yeah, I don't think they've they've been put under pressure. Mm. So you, you'll never find out until you actually yeah, play one of the good teams that make you play every set and come up with big plays under pressure. But they're key players, I think. Uh, Valentine Holmes, um, the hooker Reese Robson, yep. although they were great, and yeah. Yeah, Heel and, and this Luke, bloke. He Luke came up with a couple of tries, uh, ran for nearly 200 metres. Coming off the back of an ACL last year, um, he's been in great form. He, he hampered his in, uh, hamstring injury earlier this year, uh, so spent another couple of weeks on the sideline. But I thought, I thought his game on the weekend was exceptional. They've still got Luciano Leilua, Jeremiah Nanai, and Jason Talmalolo to come back into this team. So if they continue this this energy about them and those guys come back into some form, they, they can get there at the end of the year. Gus, do you agree with Freddie? It's a little bit too early to say whether the Cowboys are back in form? Well, if they keep doing that, they'll do what they did last year. I mean, this is a competition where they'll be dominant. They'll be a top eight team for sure if they continue to play like that. Out of nowhere, it come back against the Roosters last week. Maybe the wet weather helped them. I don't know what it was that sparked it. But that just turned the clock back 12 months and they went on a rampage last year and got themselves into the top four. They're, they're a top eight team easily and with those players yet to come back, it's a very, very strong side. I can't understand what happened in the first eight weeks of the competition. When I saw that performance against the Roosters and last night, I'm thinking, well, what did happen in the first eight weeks? Why was it like that? Because it was nothing like that. What about for the Dragons? Quite concerning for them. This is their sixth straight loss. Uh, there's media speculation every single day about their coach, Anthony Griffin. How do you see this situation getting better? Can you well, see it improving? I think the club's got to put it to bed. I think the players are trying, and in all of those games, they were a chance of winning all of them. Um, yesterday was probably the worst of those, but uh, I think the club's got to settle down and, and make a decision on its future so everyone can get on with their lives. I don't think... They look to me, I said it during the week, they look like a team that doesn't expect anything good to happen. They're not looking for anything positive. Uh, they look understressed. They, they, you know, they look, there's a lot of things on their mind other than just trying to win and play football games. Uh, against the Tigers, they clutched, you know, defeat from the jaws of victory. They're just not playing anywhere near to their potential at the moment. I think their roster's actually pretty good. I don't mind their roster at all. And, and they should be doing a lot better than they're doing. But I think the whole club needs to settle itself down and say, well, this is where we're going and, and get it done at the moment. It's just all media speculation. Players read that, fans read that. There's no real leadership coming out and saying this is what we're doing.
And is it just a matter of saying this is what's going to happen next year or do they need to bring in change immediately? Well, you know, we're halfway through this year. They're well down the Premiership ladder. Uh, they're going to be wanting to recruit players. They're going to be wanting to retain players or the players that want to know about their future. The coaching staff is obviously going to change. I don't think we can get away from that fact. So they need some direction there. Before they can do any retention or recruitment, they want to know who the coach is going to be and what the coaching setup is going to be. And so well, That's the biggest decision is getting that right. Mm -hmm. Getting that decision right. At the moment, they just looks a, a lack of connection in attack. They look like they're playing like individuals. Uh, they're all trying, but when you don't play this game together, it's it's a hard game to play. Now they say, you know, picking the coach, and I think everyone believes it's going to be a new coach. There's talk of young blokes like Jason Riles and uh, Ben Hornby and um, Dean Young, or there's talk of Des Haslers and Shane Flanagan's. Now, you're in a si similar situation, but you went with a young coach. All the advice coming through all the media says that they, they need an experienced coach. What's your thoughts? Oh, it's too hard, mate. It, it's unless really you're close, hard. unless you know the dynamics. Yeah, unless you really know the club and where mm -hmm. it is. I, you know, I, I really don't know. I really don't know. The only bloke that's had success there in the last 20 years is Wayne Bennett, and Wayne just does his own thing and walks in, does his job and walks out, you know. But they've... I don't think it's as easy as just fixing the coach. I don't think that's the, the major problem. It might be one of the factors, but it's certainly not the whole factor that, that's going to get that club back to where it needs to be. Well, the Bunnies, they are on top of the ladder for the first time in four years since 2019, following a tough 20-0 win over the Tigers. The Bunnies, they are flying high at the moment. What did you make of this performance against the Tigers yesterday? Yeah, just um, professional. I don't think they were ever at their best during the game. And I put a lot of that down to the Tigers. The Tigers were really enthusiastic, willing. The Tigers' defence has improved out of sight. They made them work for it, but work they did. And when the hard work had to be done on their own line, they've conceded no points. That's a great sign. You know, they've got pride in their performance and pride in their try line, and that's going to take them a long way as well. But they're so adept at scoring points virtually when it seems whenever they need them, that if their defence can be as good as it was yesterday, they're going to beat a lot of sides. Well, that's what wins premierships, isn't it? I think we all know that defence wins premierships and they've considered six tries in the last four weeks. Six in total. That's, that's the best defence in the comp in the last month of footy. And um, if they can continue that and, and build off that, well, they'll be there when the whips are cracking at the end of the year. Are they well and truly premiership favourites in your yeah. eyes? Uh, no, Tom Burgess, who mm. adds a lot to them because of his size. He comes off the bench and he takes a lot of pressure off their team because he's so big and absorbs a lot of, a lot of punishment, really. He's been doing a great job. He was a late withdrawal, uh, Tom, too. Yeah, he was yeah, during warm-up. Warm -up. Back spasm. Um, and the thing is, that was 8-0 until 72, 73 minutes. So it shows you that they're happy to win in the long game and they're patient and... And both teams completed at like 87%. So they didn't go away. There was long periods of the game where the ball was in play and they've just got a great setup. They've got great systems and um, they're, they're going to be hard to beat. Well, they've, they've been to preliminary finals, what, the last five or six years. Yeah. They've been close the whole time. But never Grand during final. that time have they ever impressed me as like a Melbourne or a Penrith when they're at their top or like a Rooster. You know when they're winning premierships and doing yeah. it? They've never really got to me that way, that they're in that sort of ilk. And I still think there's another level they've got to get to if they want to win this premiership. I, I think a Penrith at their best is better than the, better than the Rabbitohs. So the Rabbitohs have still got a ways to go. It's not what they do with all these other sides. So in your mind, they're not completely... And neither have I thought that over the last five or six mm. years. I've always felt they've finished exactly where they probably deserved to finish or where their, their, their football said they were going to finish. Uh, they got to one grand final and went down narrowly. Probably could have won that game. But they've never really struck me as that if they were at their best and Panthers are at their best, I think Panthers win. Mm. But they're closer now than they have ever been in, in that part of the game. We've always seen this brilliance in, in South Sydney when you know they flick the switch and Cody Walker turns it on that left-hand side with Latrell Mitchell and Alex <laughs> Johnston. They've always had that. But I think it's that, that ruthless game management that they're willing to stay in the long game, as, as Brad just said, and, and win tight. The Panthers have been able to do that in the last three years. Melbourne have been able to do that. The Souths are starting to get that in their DNA. And if they can continually build that, that'll give them confidence to go into those, those big games at the back of the so year. You're seeing, so you're seeing an improved side from what we have seen the last few years when so they have been able patient, to make it. More mature, mm. more patient, more ruthless, and, and, a, and a team that is willing to stay in the fight. And they haven't always been brilliant, but they've always been willing 
to show that desperation to stop tries. And you know that defensive display over the last month has been has been what they focused on. What, what about the ti about. the Tigers um, and in particular their attack? What what's missing? They needed Cody. If Cody played for the Tigers, I reckon the Tigers would have won that game. I think they just missed that. Look, Luke Brooks was outstanding, you know, mainly with his defence. He was very willing. Come up with some really big contact and, you know, trying to inspire his team. I, they just missed that bit of brilliance that could give everyone confidence that they run into right holes. And, and if you looked at South Sydney in, in those um, highlights, Cody's passing was a big part of turning any sort of, um, you know, problem with the defence into... Meters. So, you know, not everyone gets a Cody Walker. So, um, you know, they've got to work around how they're going to turn 87% possession into tries and points. Yeah, let's put the Tigers into context too. They were awful in the opening five or six rounds of the competition. The last five weeks, they've been good. They're in a good place, the Tigers. Mm -hmm. they're, they're laying a foundation to build off. A young, young Buller at the back, he's been really good over the last few weeks and he's going to get better. I think they're starting to understand their, their game a little bit more and they're willing to work hard to get that game on. So uh, they're, they're not far away. They're, their attack's nowhere near where it can get to, but they're starting to lay that foundation of the game. They're, they're limiting their errors. They're playing the long game. And, and if you can have that, you'll put yourself in, in the contest most weeks. Uh, they just came up against a really good side in, in the Rabbits on the weekend, but... They've won two games in the last five weeks and they've been in the contest most time. Three games. They also beat the bye. They did. They did. <laughs> They're a very new team. No combos. Yeah. Yeah. Like every week it seems. So they've had different combinations every week. Some of these blokes wouldn't even know each other. They've got great kids. Yeah. Great kids. They're certainly... Um yeah, some improvement happening for the Tigers. And don't forget as well, next week in the NRL, we celebrate Indigenous Round and the Rabbitohs will be taking on the Eels in a Friday night blockbuster. So to secure your seat, head to nrl.com slash tickets. So let's take a look at the incredible jersey South Sydney will be running out in and how it all came together. Since the beginning of time, our elders have played and continue to play an important role in our communities. Sharing knowledge, stories, and guiding our future generations. South Sydney Rabbitohs continue to draw strength from our Indigenous roots and proudly represent all the great Indigenous players who have worn the Cardinal and Myrtle. This is our 2023 Indigenous jersey. Always was and always will be. It's a great, you know, theme for this year's um, NAIDOC for our elders, particularly just because of, um, you know, what would have went on, um, you know, hundreds of years ago to, you know, throughout their lives and what they would have had to deal with as young kids. Um, to be able to listen and learn about that is is always quite special. And, shows us the strength of our people, um, shows the resilience of our people that we're still here, still strong and proud of who we are and where we come from, so. My nan now, she's actually still, she, she's a Lapri's elder. She um, she still works in the, down at the Lapri's house, so um, she, she's pretty special down there. She always tells me stories of when we were younger. Pretty important, obviously, um, to remember where we've come from and uh, we wouldn't know you know, our own culture if it weren't for them and obviously everything that they've been through in the past, um, everything that, you know, Indigenous people in general have gone through in the past, um, you know, stems down through our elders and, and um, yeah, we're, we're a strong race, obviously everything they've been through um, and that strength is getting passed down. You know, to be on their land and um, make sure that we're respecting it and, um, you know, little stories about where we were and what was, you know, happening on, the, on that particular beach is, you know, very special and um, I think that's what we do very well here at, at South is, um, you know, respect the, the First Nations culture. I've got aunties and uncles that I've looked up, look up to my whole life. Um, I've always been around family and to treat them res with respect is a big thing. I always grew up knowing that I was, you know, Aboriginal and, and loving to learn more about my culture because it obviously got taken away from us but it, it's that's survived and it's actually rebuilding itself from the ground up and it's, I'm loving every minute of it. 
you know, reconnecting with it is something special. Um, it's something I, I'm truly, you know, passionate about. And um, any time, any place, you know, you can connect to country. And um, and I think our elders are definitely, you know, someone I look up to. I've got a great, you know, leadership in in my lifestyle and, and in my life. And um, you know, the way I lead and present myself is the way I've been taught. You wonder why people want to play at this club because. You know, and wonder why Aboriginal communities support this this club is because of you know what they've done in the past, and it's not just made up overnight. It's been able over time they've created this legacy. You know, of being a great club and great foundation it's for Blackfellas, um, non-Indigenous, to be able to connect and be one together, and that's what you feel under this roof here in Ephraim. You know, the Rabbitohs are showing the way with um, you know how Aboriginal culture should be celebrated. Um, that's no certainly no knock on to any other club but you walk through these walls you know that um, you know we have a deep history um, a deep connection with our Aboriginal culture you can just feel it it's an amazing feeling to be a part of a club um, like that yeah, it's it's hard to put into words but um, makes you very proud to go out there and put on those colours each and every week Welcome back to the Sunday footy show. We're going to have a look back at the Panthers and the Roosters clash on Friday night. The Panthers put on an absolute masterclass, a 48-4 to win over the Roosters. And Lindsay Collins joins us live now on the show. Lindsay, great to have you on. Uh, how did you pull up? Obviously, a disappointing result on uh, Friday night out at the foot of the mountains. Yeah, all good. Um, it was a physical one. Uh, we had a review yesterday and just went over a couple of things and... Yeah, it was pretty positive to be honest. It was um, pretty good. Um, we got a lot out of it, and um, the beauty of footy is there's another week. So um, we're getting about halfway through the season now, and um, yeah, it's still a long, long time to go. So uh, yeah. Who's most vocal in your review, Lindsay? Um, our leaders are pretty vocal at the moment. Um, you know, Ted, uh, Kiri, and Jared there, and. Um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're you know, trying, to, trying to navigate us through this period at the moment, so yeah. You've had plenty of staff movement over the years. Uh, a few of them all coaching in different clubs at the moment. Adam O'Brien, Justin Holbrook. Um, who's the staff members? Who looks after the attack and defence? Because Jason Rolls obviously been talking about us in George at the moment. What does he look after and who are the other staff you got there? Yeah, so we've got Matt King in a, um, looking over attack there. And then we've got Jason um, looking at defence there and then um, Robbo sort of oversees everything. But, um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're both really good, both great blokes. Um, they've, they've done it all as well themselves. And um, when, when you have coaches like that, it's a, um, easy to listen to them and feed off them because they've been there and done that before as well. So, um, yeah. It was uh, hard luck as well on Friday night. We saw Jared Root Hargraves go off with a pec injury uh, and Joey Manu as well with an ankle injury. How have the two of them pulled up? Yeah, yeah, they, they were in good spirits on Saturday. Um, you know, oh, as good as he can be, I guess. So, um, yeah, they're big for us. Um, Jared's the heart of our, our forward pack and Joey's just getting himself there going in the um, six. Um, so, yeah, we were just... It's a week by week thing with them. I don't think they're too serious, so which is positive as well. And um, we'll see how they go. It's all right to have a review with your coaches post game, and you, you take advice from their experience, etc. But what's it feel like to be in that situation out there where the game was unraveling by the minute, where Panthers were really dominating, and you find yourself behind the try line seven or eight times during the course of the game? What's it actually like out there, and what are you doing at the time to try and arrest that on the field? Yeah, it is, it's difficult, yeah, when you're on the back foot there and um, we have our things where we call them pit stops sort of thing, so um, whether that's in your forward pack or your edges and then when it's generally behind the line, it's Teddy, Teddy's got the group, the group's eyes and um, he'll let us know what he wants, well, what's causing these mistakes, tries um, and where we need to sort of rectify uh, those sort of areas and so that helps the first couple of tries. What happens when you get to try five, six and seven and the scoreboard's ticking up and you're thinking, gee, this could be 50? What, how much impact is it having there? Yeah, it is because I think when those sort of situations happen, it's just the best thing is just to get back to your footy, you know? Um, you guys have been talking about the long game before as well. As, um, 
it, that's 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 our style of footy. Um, you know, getting through our sets, kicking it back to them, and then Dean up um, sort of thing. So uh, we're letting the pressure off the valve off a little bit here and there, and um, I think that's what we need to work on going forward and uh, just that good consistent live ball. Lindsay, you were born into a rugby league family. Your your, far, your grandfather is Lionel Williamson. Uh, what was it like growing up with a grandfather that played for Australia? Yeah, yeah. Um, wasn't wasn't um, he didn't talk about it too much to be honest. He was pretty quiet about it all. But he um, worked at a school up in Cairns, um, and he had all these different jerseys up on his wall in his office. Um, and they were all jerseys that he'd traded with um, on his trips around the world, going on tours and played over in England for a bit and um, even here in Australia and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, we, we grew up around him and coached a team up in uh, St Augustine's Cairns and they had a confraternity cup every year and we'd go and run the tea for them in the school holidays. And so yeah, that's probably the most Bit of footy growing up that I can remember with him. We he was a good player. Yeah, yeah. Really I've had player. a lot of people tell me yeah, about him. Really good player. Did he but, still um, give you advice? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He calls me every week. So um, yeah. I coached a bloke uh, called Henry Raymond. Came down to the Bulldogs years ago, yeah. who I believe was related to Lionel Williamson. Do you know Henry Raymond at no, all? I'm you know, not too yeah, sure. he came from yeah, yeah. There, there was also um, I feel like this your family had something to do with your family. Yeah, well, Lionel's as well. brother, Max Williamson. Mm. And he, he was from Innisfail, where I'm from, and he was the local vet. So uh, he also was a, was a fantastic rugby league pro player. More your style, the, the prop forward, yeah, yeah. whereas Lionel was a, a winger. So, yeah. Um, yeah, bit of a family connection there. Yeah, small world. When did you, when did you um, sort of ignite your dreams to become an NRL player? Was it from a growing up in a family that had it in its blood? Was it quite early? Uh, not really. It was, I don't know, you always grow up playing footy in the backyard and doing your chip and chases and idolising different blokes um, growing up. But, um, yeah, they probably, probably got a bit more serious when started playing 20s and then um, definitely got really serious when uh, Roosters offered me a contract and I realised that this is um, a possibility. So, yeah. What was it like moving to Sydney? Um, yeah, it was different at first. Um, we, we joke around a bit. Um, Bill talks, uh, talks about it a bit. I think in Brisbane I had a, a, a mullet and a, a, a Land Cruiser U. And I, I remember I couldn't rock up first day. You didn't bring that to Bondi? Yeah, I didn't bring that to Bondi, so I sold the, sold the ute. What, and did you buy I, a BM? I, I, yeah, <laughs> sold the ute and shaved the head and yeah, I, I come to training. And then, um, but, uh, yeah, adjusted quite nicely. Uh, enjoy the lifestyle down here. Um, you know, me and my wife, um, we're in our 20s and it's perfect for us at the moment. Nice and close to the beaches and um, close to training. And, um, yeah, we've made a life for ourselves down here, which is good. He just said that he's got a chip and chase. Did you hear that? Well, uh, I, Would you, did, did are you, you happy for him to use that? Did you see his kick on the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> he's had a couple this year. Yeah, I think we've actually got some vision of, uh, of some of your kicks as well. I think there was one that wasn't so great and then there's a few that uh, you deserve your kicking licence for. Yeah, I should have stopped it. I should have stopped go. it after this. Yeah. A bit of panic involved in that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be a front rower ending up with the ball on last. <laughs> always always said there, to forwards, we go. always said to forwards, if you get caught with the ball and you need a kick, grub a kick it. Whatever you do, just grub yeah, a kick. Yeah, yeah, don't put it in don't the Don't put it in the air. <laughs> Are you one of the players that are at you know, the end of the session with the halves getting in the road and practising your, your drop goals? Nah, God, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've had a bad experience with that, actually. I, <laughs> I'll stay away from that now. So. What's your experience? Uh, I hit Jake Friend in the head. <laughs> oh, I, thought he, I thought he was going to get up and deck me. And I think it was only my first year as well, so uh, I, I, I do not drop kick at training. I'll, anymore, go, I'll, so. I'll give you a little bit of insight in, into Lindsay Collins. He's not your traditional forward that just turns up and, and plays the game. The preparation that you put into your performance every week, you... You sit there, you, you try and visualise what's going to happen. Um, you take a lot of time in your preparation, don't you? Yeah, it was sort of a saying I heard a little while ago, preparation dictates performance. So, um, And then, yeah, routine dictates consistency. So it's just the preparation and your routine around preparation. And those have sort of kept me going um, for the last couple of years and just every year dialling in on it a bit more and more and 
Um, What's some of it? Can you give us some examples to kids, like things you do? Yeah, or just lifestyle, um, what you eat, you know, your recovery, your sleep, um, and then just your things away from footy, you know, to sort of keep your mind off it, mm. um, you know, uh, whether that's study or work. And um, so, yeah, little bits and pieces here and there. So. Are, you, um, are you studying anything? Yeah, studying a uh, Bachelor of Business and it's like majoring in property and then I should hopefully finally get signed off on my carpentry this year. So it's a seven year apprenticeship, um, <laughs> too long, so yeah. Give hey, modelling yeah. away? Just... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was just saying to the boys before, I thought I'd get a bit of makeup on the... <laughs> <laughs> we can call them if you want. <laughs> um, also, um, next week in the NRL, uh, a really special round, Indigenous round, and um, the Roosters have created a uh, really impressive Indigenous round jersey you hear um, with a dedication to Arthur Beetson. Yep, yeah, yeah, we met um, a couple of the designers last week. Uh, they came in and uh, sort of talked through, we'll obviously get a bit more this week um, about the jersey, but they came through. We've also got a training shirt, I think, um, that they designed as well. And yeah, Arthur Beetson, um, you know, a proud Indigenous man, and he was a big part of the Roosters, and um, to sort of pay homage to that, it's mm. always good. I think we've had him on our jersey before in an Indigenous round, so um, going back to it now, yeah, it's mm. good. All right, well, you're sticking around because uh, you're going to try your hand at Freddie's Pass yeah, up, yeah. Uh, just coming up after the break. Yes, the Melbourne Storm with a 24-18 to 18 victory over the Brisbane Broncos, which did see the Broncos move off the top of the ladder. So if we're looking at the Broncos now, heading into next week, they're taking on the Penrith Panthers. What do they need to do in this week, or how does this week look for them? Well, they, the uh, Simbins hurt them badly. So Herbie Farmworth, who was mostly forced into that. Uh, there was a kick put behind him. Uh, that cost them two tries, and then... When they wanted to get back into the game, Carrigan got Simbin. So I don't think they're that far off. Um, I thought Melbourne were much better. Much better. I think uh, Harry Grant and Cameron Munster you know, really led the way and I thought they were much better. They lost their halfback and, and captain Adam Reynolds early in the game as well. So they had to overcome that. Um, they didn't have a ready-made replacement to, to jump into that role. Um, and then the Sinbins, a few decisions didn't go their way. I think they, they'll just put this game to the side and, and move forward. They, they were good the week before. Um, and they were still in this contest. You know, Melbourne scored a late try to blow the scoreline out a little bit, but th they're, they're still right there. Well, they'll have to do it without Adam Reynolds this week. That's a, that m makes it a, a fair bit tougher for them. Yeah, it does. They've got Jock Madden, yeah. who's filled in for him in the past, and I think he'll get another opportunity. Um, but they were still there. This, this is uh, the injury to Adam Reynolds, and... Look, he went off for a HIA, but I think it was it was more the nerve pain down the arm that he uh, that sort of kept him off the field, um, and that's probably keeping him out this week, to be honest. Um, but hopefully Adam's okay and he can get back because he's an integral part of what they're doing. Um, he's really important to them and the direction that he gives them. Um, so they're going to have to find another way. Mm. Gus, how do you see this unfolding for the Broncos from here? Yeah, I'd look. Games against the Panthers, like for a team like the Broncos, is not the be-all and end-all of their season. They've got to beat them in September, so it's all a learning process at the moment. Um, I think they need to go back and watch that Melbourne Storm game. When you play the top sides with the really good coaches and um, what Melbourne Storm were doing to them and trying to do them during the course of the game, I think it's a good lesson for the Broncos. They're probably, they don't get game-planned for as much as they were the other night, and Melbourne certainly you know, uncovered a few little weaknesses in their defensive line and some other things they needed to work on. They didn't get a chance. They lost their halfback, the sin bins. Uh, we've spoken about all of those. Um, and this week, they're going to play without their halfback. They have beaten Penrith already this year, and they went to Penrith and did it, so they get back to home. It's on the eve of, of origin selection. They'll all want to be keen to do it. But I don't think this, this game's uh, as vital to their season as, as what people try to make out. It's, that's not going to make or break their season. They've got to beat Penrith in September. That's what they're aiming for. If you look at the top, say, five teams, Canberra beat them, Melbourne beat them. Uh, obviously, they beat Penrith. They play them this week. And South beat them. So the top teams have all beat Brisbane. Why is that? Because I think they get game plan for better. Mm. I don't think the bottom teams have got the artillery to game plan for it. The better coaches and the better teams and the better players, the better playmakers can prize the Broncos apart. You know, they've got weaknesses there. There's no risk about that. What they've got is great athleticism and great attacking prowess. And when they play the weaker sides, they can pile up big scores on them and it's just too good for them. So it's, it's, it's what they learn when they play the better teams and the better coaches. And there's a lot to learn out of that Melbourne Storm 
game the other night. Even though it, things went against them, there were things there in the game that I was disappointed in them because I thought they might have been ready for it, but they weren't. What about uh, Melbourne's performance and um, some news that we were speaking about, Billy, before uh, the game they're making, or Craig Bellamy has said that he's going to make uh, a decision on his coaching future uh, as to whether he'll go around again next year and mm. by all the coming days and speculations. So he said that, did he? Yeah, early this week, I think. He's, yep. Well, he's, th all the speculation is that it, he will go around again. Yeah, it, it's... At the, at the start of the year, I, I thought there's no way he will go around again. And then the longer it's taken, he's, he's pushed deadlines back, he's pushed another deadline back, and it just means that he's given it more consideration. Um, it's getting closer to next year, mm. it's getting more real, and the longer it goes, uh, the more I feel he'll, he'll coach again. Mm. Um, I don't know that for, uh, as a fact, but that's just the feeling I'm getting. We well, do a good do job down there, I think. Being down there also is a huge benefit, the fact that they're not reading papers and they wouldn't be in the news as much. I think, although they did a great job when Cam was retiring from the point of view of they were asking him every week. And Cam just, you know, obviously all the people down there understood and Cam knew what he wanted to do and it just got played out like it did in, in Sydney. It was like a huge deal, but the way Melbourne were playing was like it was nothing. They were just getting on with the, with the job and you see that in how they played on the weekend. They didn't look distracted at all, so... You know, the fact is they're away from a lot of the media, I think, is very beneficial. And, but I think just also the respect he's got and the players, you know, they just know what he's about. The other thing that they've done well as a club is they've got their playing roster in order. You know, there's no players sitting there waiting for the coach mm. to sign, to, to re-sign or anything like that. They're there. They're there for the club and there for the right reasons. Um, if it's Craig that's the coach next year, so be it. If it's someone else, well, they're, they're happy with that because they're there for the right reasons. So I think that takes a lot of pressure off Craig and takes a lot of pressure off the coach and the media speculation around How many more years do you think he could do it for? Well, I thought he was going to retire three years ago, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm certainly wrong. I think it's a big... I think he likes the challenge at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Like, you look at the Melbourne team, they're very different from... You know, if you sort of think, what year do you retire? 18, 2018. 18. You know, yeah. you think of the difference when Billy was playing to now. That is a very different yeah. team. You know, you obviously got five or six there that are sort of the base. But, you know, you've got, you got a winger from the sevens. You've got, you know, you've got back rowers that were really young. You've got Katara who's just come from uh, the Warriors, who's a very inexperienced player. So their recruiting's always good, you know that. But I reckon he's excited about this too. Isn't he playing well, Will Warbrick? Mm. The yeah, development been... of him over the last 12 months, he's gone from not playing the game to cementing himself as a, f a first winger in, in the Melbourne Storm, which is one of the dominant teams in the competition, and picked up two tries on the weekend. Yeah, he was impressive, that's for sure.